Hello everyone and welcome to the forest. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and we're out here again looking for some great botany. Spring is in high gear and I know we're gonna see some interesting things including some really cool shrubs. So come on, let's go see what we can find. Believe it or not, North America does have its own wild hyacinths and here is one species. This is aptly named the wild hyacinth, Camassia siloides. It's a beautiful plant. It grows kind of in edge habitats as well as into the prairies, and it produces a prodigious amount of nectar. Its flowers range from a light white color to a deeper blue and sometimes even close to purple, and it produces a lot of nectar, so it's a favorite by bees. And like lots of members of the genus Camassia, it is really, really toxic, so deer tend to avoid it. It's an awesome plant, and it won't be around for much longer, because as soon as spring really starts to heat up and give way to summer, it goes dormant and uh, waits out another season until spring returns yet again. Now here's a shrub that doesn't get a nearly enough attention. This is bladder nut, Stephelia trifolia gets its specific epithet from these tripartite compound leaves. But one of the coolest aspects of it are these tiny little pendulous flowers that sit down underneath. They're really great for bees and butterflies alike, but one of the coolest aspects is that once fertilized, the ovaries swell into this weird pod and the seeds come loose, hence its common name, bladder nut. They can float on the water or they can rattle around on the ground as the wind blows. This tends to prefer moist soils with a lot of calcium in them, but it'll grow in a wide variety of conditions, and it's another great shrub for a native landscape. I highly recommend it, and if you find this in the woods, make sure to take time to appreciate it. Meet the prairie trillium. It stands as a perfect example of why I don't really like common names that much. As you can see, we're not in a prairie. This plant will occur in a lot of different habitats. It's one of the sessile trilliums, meaning its flower sits right at the base of the leaflets, not on a stalk like some of the others. The bracts are down below, the petals themselves are up here, hiding the anthers and the ovary. It's a really attractive plant. The petal colors can range from burgundy to almost yellow, but one of the coolest aspects, as you'll probably notice, is the modeling on the leaves. Now that's more than just aesthetically beautiful. It probably serves a pretty important function for this plant in the forests. Now a lot of people have debated about whether it's being utilized for uh, defense against sunflex or to increase photosynthetic capacity in one way or another. There probably is some evidence for that, but the most likely reason for this modeling is camouflage. Most of the herbivores that are a threat to this species are colorblind. They can't really differentiate greens from reds, from blues. And this modeling helps to break up the outline of the plant against the backdrop of all the other kind of gray hues that the herbivore would be seeing. Researchers were able to show that plants that didn't have modeling experience more herbivory than plants that do have modeling. So it's kind of neat that it looks like camouflage and in fact it probably is functioning as such. Awesome plant, really look forward to this one blooming each year and it's one of my favorite trillium species in the entire continent. Papa. This is America's forgotten fruit. The scientific name of this species is Asimina triloba. It's a member of the custard apple family, Ananaceae. And what's unique about this small tree is the fact that it's the most northerly representative of an almost entirely tropical genus. There's a handful of species that occur in the Gulf states, but otherwise, this beautiful plant is about as northerly as this group gets. They kind of have this musty, mushroomy smell to them. I kind of like it. But after these get fertilized, they produce giant fruits. They're one of the largest natural fruits in North America, and they taste amazing, at least in my opinion. The pollinators of this species are not bees or butterflies. They're actually beetles, hence the musty odor. It's a really neat plant that a lot of people overlook and largely have forgotten in American culture. The fruits of the species are quite large, which has led a lot of people to believe that this is one of those megafaunal dispersal species. They're simply too big for most species around here to take advantage of. However, some coyotes and possums will spread enough seeds around. 
but that's probably not the most effective seed dispersal mechanism. They probably miss things like giant ground sloths and mammoths. Instead, these trees mostly persist as clonal offshoots, and in fact, this whole population around us is probably one genetic individual, which makes pollination kind of difficult for this species. But regardless, it's a great find and one you really should pay attention to, especially if you like wild fruits. Well, that concludes another great day of botanizing. We saw some pretty cool stuff, didn't we? Pawpaw, bladder nut. Some of my favorite plants are in the forest this time of year. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the Indefensive Plants videos. There's more on the way, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Until next time.